Hi, I'm Jim Miller, and I'm here with Steve Mullen uh, from KnightRider.com. Steve, you've been building uh, race bikes and working on performance on motorcycles for quite a long time. And I understand that recently you came across quite a uh, novel uh, little item. What do you have for us? Yeah, Jim. Um, you know, I've always looked for stuff to help people uh, improve their performance. And uh, doing a little surfing of the web, came across a little device that uh, gives you a nice little piece of information, including acting as a tack and a speedometer for your bike. A little unit called Vapor, uh, Motorcycle Intelligence for the Intelligent and Performance Oriented Rider. But we've come across a few extra uses for it too. Well I know you uh, used to run your own dyno and a lot of people want to put their bike on a dyno. Um, does this unit give you something information similar to what a dyno might give you? Yeah Jim, um, actually uh, it'll give you, it'll track your 0 to 60 time, it'll actually give you uh, a quarter mile times and it will also give you a, a, a dyno so that you can actually run your own dyno graphs out on the road so f while it's not a re replacement for uh, a, a very important important dyno tuning, it'll give you a good idea of what changes that you make to your bike, how it's affecting the power. So it's uh, it'll save you a lot of time and effort uh, before you go to your regular shop. And if you're a racer, this is valuable information because you can see it right at the track. So you're telling me that some unit that I could mount on my motorcycle will allow me to see the effects of tuning my exhaust or changing the aerodynamics or changing the carburation, spark plugs, other things that might affect performance? Oh, most definitely. It's that the electronics is getting very, very sophisticated in the motorcycle world. And this little unit right here, it actually contains a G-meter so that it measures the g-forces that there and in addition it monitors your rpms the same way your tack does and it uh, has a wheel sensor so it knows how many miles per hour that you're going so you put all those three pieces of information together and you can get an awful lot of really nice information for a performance oriented rider well, let's take a look at it okay you know, this is something that probably a lot of riders have been looking for to mount on their motorcycles, especially some of the sports riders. And that's it? That's that's all there is to it? That's all there is to it, Jim. Look down here and you can see, said on this particular display, it said right now we're showing the mileage at the top. We're showing your, your time of day. Uh, you have a gear indicator here. You have your miles an hour. You have your tack down here with a graphical representation, and over on the side, we also have a G meter. Now that's good for the uh, sports bike rider, but what's in it for the Harley rider? Let me show you what we can do right now. Now we have very, very, very nice looking billet aluminum case for it that can be mounted on your bike. Okay, what all would this baby do? Well, Jim, let's uh, show you some of the things that it will do. Uh, simply by pushing the menu key, uh, it brings up a secondary screen, and you can see a few of the features that are out there on it. In this particular case, let's look down at some of the run timing stuff that you can do. And you can see that we have a roll-on timing, so you can set mile an hour that you want to roll on, start and end, and it will do the timing for it. We can go down here to the dyno mode, and in the dyno mode, basically you give it the start and ending RPMs that you want to do your dyno run from. And this is variable, so you can set it for any particular bike that you want. And then it goes into the mode right there, and you can go out and you ride it on the street and pick the gear that you want, and then you'll do your full throttle acceleration, and when it reaches the designated RPMs, it will go ahead and it starts recording the information and you can go back and review that on a screen later on. Something that is some interest is the drag calculations. Everybody knows that aero drag creates a lot of issues with both your gas mileage and if you're trying to go fast, aero drag is very, very important. So this will actually do a coast down test and tell you what your aero drag is and what your rolling resistance is. This is uh, some pretty serious information for the uh, real gearheads that are out there. So you're telling me that uh, I could actually see what the drag coefficient, if you will, is of uh, different clothes that I'm wearing or whether I put a fairing on it or not a fairing or if I'm tucked in, uh, etc. 
Oh, most definitely. And uh, I know there's a few guys out in this area that are real serious drag racers, and there's some land speed racers out there. And this is very, very, very important information. This falls into the category of the unfair advantage. This is stuff that you can do that's free horsepower and free speed at the track. Now, I understand that... Um Actually, uh, changing the drag um, characteristics uh, are more effective than adding horsepower. Is that true? Oh, it's yes, and it's a lot cheaper do, to do that. So this is a very good way, just removing mirrors, uh, how you're tucking, um, where you place your feet, the uh, clothes you wear. Uh, very subtle, subtle, subtle changes will make big differences in aero drag, and aero drag is the biggest limiter of your top speed and has a huge impact on gas mileage so you guys that out there that have uh, road kings and dressers little changes uh, can have big impact when you're out on the road as far as your mileage well let's take a look at how this thing uh, fits on the bike and what different connections are, are uh, required for it and then we'll take a look at uh, some of the other features that sounds like a good idea, Jim. Just so happens we've got uh, this uh, real nice 97 uh, FXD, and we are going to upgrade, uh, remove the existing speedometer on it, and we're going to replace it with the Vapor unit. The first step in our install was to remove the existing speedometer. Because the Dyna had a set of indicator lights that were built into the speedometer bracket, Steve had to fabricate a new bracket from a small piece of aluminum he had lying around the shop. While there are many ways to mount the unit to your bike, we chose to use the RAM ball mount system that's included with the Vapor unit. Once the unit was mounted, Steve proceeded to install the wiring harness. One end of the harness has a plug that connects directly into the back of the unit. The next step was to connect the RPM sensor wire to the coil on the bike. Steve attached the rear wheel sensor to a small bracket he had made from aluminum stock. The included quarter inch magnet was then glued into a hole he had drilled into the rear sprocket for a nice clean look. Next, he attached the remaining power leads to a switched connection under the seat so the unit would only receive power when the ignition switch was on. The only thing left to do was reinstall the seat and we would be ready to test. What we're looking at right now is we're looking at a different screen that's available to you. Uh, this is called the symmetric graphic screen. Notice on one side you see RPMs, on the other side you may see mile an hour. Up at the top you've got a sequential shift area so you can see uh, what particular gear you're in. So we're going to go ahead and run through the gears so you can see what happens as uh, we shift a little bit. You can put it down into first gear and as we start to roll you can see it picks up in first gear. As I shift into second gear it goes up. Go into third gear. We're going up higher, fourth gear, and we're in fifth gear. Now while we're looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and just change it to one of the other display screens. This is what's called the street graphic screen. This is probably the best for, for most riders right here. It said you've got a large, RP, uh, a large mile an hour, you've got your tack down at the bottom, you've got your gear, You've got your odometer and you've got your time of day. You can still see we're running along in fifth gear. We're going to go ahead and downshift and you'll see it picks it up right away. Third gear. Second gear. First gear. So you can see it's pretty good indicating of what's going on. This is one of the race graphics modes where you're just looking at your gear and your RPMs and you have a sequential graph up there. This is one of the analog modes right here and it gives you your RPMs and it gives you your speed. Uh, inside that happens to be your odometer. 
Well, Steve, that uh, that was pretty simple and a lot of fun too. I think um, I think even I could do something like that. Yeah, the instructions that actually come with the vapor unit are pretty self-explanatory. I think just about anybody can, and you can see we used a minimal amount of tools, so there's really not that much to it. So uh, what's next? I think I'm going to go out and see what this bad puppy will do now that I can measure the performance on it. Hey, sounds like fun. Why don't you join us?